Hey everybody, how's it? Aloha. Okay, Taproot, poem, first time, listen, first time I heard the band. Um, this old composer here at the Decomposer Lounge, of course, my name is Jeeps, you guys know that. Um, I want to thank you guys for all your support, like I always do. Let me get this out of the way. If you want to buy me a cup of coffee, because you know these videos are not monetized for me, they're copyright claims, super cool beans, it helps me out with the kids. Also, if you buy any of this merchandise, ding, 100% of the proceeds goes to Kapiolani Women's and Children's Hospital. Uh, it's a cancer treatment and recovery hospital here in Hawaii. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Let's do this. Taproot, poem, all right. This had to have been a hit in its days. This is an absolute hook bomb. Uh, the very opening though at first, because I'm not really, you know, I'm not really steeped in, in, in you know, a lot of music from, from the record company side of the world. But for a second, I thought it was kind of like the opening of a Nirvana song. It kind of had a vibe, but that, that quickly uh, got uh, thumb spun uh, out of my uh, brain cells there. Uh, the, the simplicity yet the power of the riff, dun, 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 that whole thing just locks you in without you having to really over feel the riff. It automatically grabs you and pulls you in. Love the way the vocals are being performed with that harmony going all the way through like that. That is so cool. It does happen in songs and stuff like that, but when it's done right, and also the fact that that harmony is at the same exact level you know, DBs as, uh, actually I wouldn't necessarily know which one was actually the melody in the sense of like which one would I pick would be the better melody of the two. Something else that was really super cool that was happening there was during the, um, uh, like a pre-chorus section, because there's a lot of fast sections that pop in and out here, so that keeps you kind of coming and going, you know, and, and kind of staying in with, the, with this ride with them. There was that little scream that happened in the middle, and that was some sick texture in the composition arrangement with the vocals. You know, in other words, the vocalist has many different, as we know on this channel, boy, the vocalist can do so many things that I've learned in, in the last five months of this channel, from growling to just insane, just Ginsu Knight vocals. This is really crazy. This is really super cool, the fact that they actually threw that in as an effect, but actually has, you know, a real bit of a punch and a thrust to it. So let's go a little more. Stand by. Drowning effect and drenching my brain I hope you'll be okay someday So I can say that you moved on in the right way Base. You saw me just cut loose on that. This is what I love about um, the the liberty bass players get. Uh, there's a really good chance that 95% of the bass lines that I'm hearing and all the music on these channels are written by the bass players. So in other words, they know what the chord changes are. But did you hear him just boom, boom, doom, 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 while the chords are just, you know, they're holding their power, but the bass is going off and it's a very, really fat, warm sound, but it has a little bit of a, of a gut to it. Something else I want to bring up really quick about the engineering. Um, the second verse, I think they may have done this in the first verse too, is that the, uh, I would say verse 2A. <laughs> um, they had the guitar right here kind of punched mono, not mono proper, but just kind of a smaller signal. 
as soon as they got into uh, the next phrase or the next section, they popped that wide open, went hard left and right. And then they really gave another kick into the sound with the guitar um, as it got heavier, as it punched into the hook. So I love that kind of dynamics in, in the technical aspect of playing guitar, choosing the sounds that you're gonna use uh, because a lot of songs that we hear um, have that, right? So in other words, they start off with a clean sound or a lightly distorted sound as they're doing some kind of, you know, um, uh, plucking pattern or whatever the case is. And then of course they kick it into the heavier and the heavier and the heavier. And that's what, uh, that's what I love about this. This drummer, if you listen really carefully, extremely powerful, great, great in engineering. And you know, listen to his hi-hat work. I know that's kind of like, not necessarily the, the main thing that, that the pure listener listens to, uh, but listens carefully to that hi-hat work he's got going on there. And it's just crispy and riffy and stuff. Really super cool. All right, here we go. A little bit more. how they let that just kind of ring out there uh, and keep um, a little bit of the room noise in that. Something else that was really super cool, I loved how they broke, brought us back into the hook slowly and they were just giving us that really drum power um, kind of play through for about 15-20 seconds and just letting us kind of reset after the song has gotten itself you know to that point just hearing the drums going in. Then they brought us into that really super chill breakdown. I just got through saying about how they changed the guitar uh, sounds and stuff based on the arrangements. And so they, so they lightened up the load, you know, pulled as much dirt off as possible, got a really nice clean sound. But what really tricked me out is I was expecting, you know, to hear the turnaround or, or, or the next real arrangement come in, um, I guess it was uh, like four bars. But after two bars, they kicked into the dirt and then came right back in with the power. Something else that was really super cool I wanna uh, say before uh, I, I dig out is in the hook, the vocals that are being done, there's a third harmony that comes in there really, really nice. Sometimes, I thought for a second, oh, that's, that's, all, that's almost too nice for the track, but it, it's really nice, it really complements everything that's going on, but it's back there, but it makes it kind of, um, it, you know, it makes it kind of like a major chord feel which is not so, you know, could be that of being happy, but it was just an addition of that note there uh, that did make it feel like, wow, this was kind of, this was kind of blooming into something. And, um, but then they brought it back in down into the heavy, but it's a very, it's, it's a harmony in the vocals and it's in the back. And um, I, I just wanted to kind of rinse on that because I thought that was really super cool. Uh, anyhow, thank you very much for those of you who did put Taproot down in the comments for me to listen to some tracks, continue to do that, drop uh, more favorite songs from Taproot uh, or anything that you know about the band and stuff. I love to hear about this. I also love to hear when, you know, in your soundtrack of life, when did you hear this uh, band first? You know, that's always kind of fun. People leave some really cool comments about that. Anyhow, so uh, thanks a lot. Uh, yes, I did do two for Tuesday, but tomorrow I'm only doing one. And so I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Thanks for hanging out. And if you so see fit, if you want to support the channel, buy me a cup of coffee. Super cool. The link will be down below, as well as a link 
for Taproot's Spotify merch and um, yeah, that stuff. Okay guys, take care. Aloha. <laughs>